Alright guys, so today we're going to do the AP Calc BC 2007, uh, problem number 6. Um, and a common pattern you'll see with problem number 6 is on any AP Calc BC FRQ is that they're either a Taylor series or a McLaurin series problem. So with that in mind, you should be able to prepare yourself beforehand and get ready for the test. So let's just dive right in. So here is the problem itself. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You might want to stop the video here or pause it and go over the problem, uh, look at it, and try and solve some of the questions you can by yourself. But basically, what the problem is asking is, what is the Taylor series for f of x equals e to the, f, e to the negative x squared? And then just apply that over uh, throughout the problem. So let's start with part A. And part A asks us for the first four non-zero terms of e to the negative x squared. But the sad thing is we, is we don't know what e to the negative x squared, squared is. Um, but what we do know is e to the x, and we know that that, that uh, Maclaurin series or Taylor series is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial and so on until x to the n over n factorial. And so basically that's the infinite sum. So now we just substitute the x with the negative x squared instead, and then we'll get negative 1 to the n multiplied by x to the 2n all over n factorial of the infinite sum from n equals 0. So that's an easy part, and then the easier part is just plugging in the values of n equals 0, 1, 2, and 3 to get the first four terms, which is equal to 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth over 2 minus x to the sixth over 6. All right? So the best part about this problem is that since it's so easy, it's worth three points. That's over one third of, uh, that's around one third of the total value of this problem. And if you look at the grading group even closer, you'll see that you'll get two. I mean, one point for just having two of the um, values: one, uh, one negative x squared or x to the fourth over two, and negative x six over six. And then you get one more point for having the other four terms, and you get one point for the general term itself. Three points for an easy problem. It's it's good. Now, part B is a little bit harder. It just wants us to find the limit of x as x goes to zero of one minus x squared minus. Of f of x over x to the fourth power. So a trick that we can do here is that you know how we found the first four terms of uh, f of x. We can just plug that directly into there and uh, subtract and do some mathematics, and we'll get that we'll just we'll get that we're remaining with negative x x to the fourth over two plus x to the sixth over six over x to the fourth, and so on. You just want those extra terms, and then the x to the fourth cancels out and you get negative one half plus x squared over six and so on and then as the limit of x goes to zero um, you'll see that the zero goes on top of the numerator for every x uh, over a denominator value and then that everything will then cancel out to zero and so you'll just have negative one half and that's a pretty easy problem but the sad thing about this problem is that it's only worth one point and that's just for the answer so that means you could literally guess a value and if it happens to be negative one half, we'll get the points for it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now let's go to part C. Um, part C is relatively easy, I think. So you want to write the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series of the integral from zero to x of what we found before, and then use the first two ter first two terms to estimate the value of zero to one half of e to the negative t squared. All right. So. An easy way to do this is just to go ahead and use the Taylor, or not the Taylor, the uh, values we found uh, in the previous question in part A, and just plug that in, and then take the integral of that, and we get these four values. Um, and then the good thing is that we only need to use the first two terms to estimate the value of one half, and you just plug that in for the, to the first two values, and just do some basic, basic mathematics, and you'll get 11 over 24. So. Um, this is an easy problem again, and it gives you three points. One for the first two terms again, one for the remaining terms, and one for the estimate. So that's another three, three points. All right? um, part D is using error, whether it be alternating series error or uh, um, integral error or um, even Lagrange error. So. Uh, Basically, we just want to prove that the value from zero to one half differs less than uh, by less than uh, one over two hundred. Um, so the way we do this, so the way we approach this, is that we know it's an alternating series error, right? We have, uh, if we go back here, you'll see that we have 
over here just in general you'll have x minus x cubed plus and then minus so the value changes so what we want to do is use the third term so we're using ultimating series error so we use the third term um, and we plug in one half into the third term right so the third term is x to the fifth over ten and you just plug in one half into the x value and that's equal to one over three hundred and twenty which is obviously less than one over two hundred all right but that's not enough we just have to we also have to justify it and we'll just justify it saying by the alternating series error this function decreases and the limit goes to zero uh, thus we can apply the alternating series error and um, we prove that it's equal to one over three and three hundred twenty meaning that if we were to add 100, 1 over 320 to the second term it would differ uh, less than by less than adding 1 over 200 All right. so you want to justify that and you'll see that they did a similar thing here um, you get one point just for using the mathematical explanation and you also get one for using the justification in words so you could get half the points just using mathematical explanation um, and then you can get the other half using the other explanation. And that just wraps up the problem. And if you guys want more problems like this, I will link them down below. And uh, if you want even more, you can just look at all the FRQs uh, from 1998 to 2015 and look at the last question. All right. And I'll see you in the next one.